So as mentioned, my name is John Haru. I'm uh, coming to you from uh, Canada. Um, I've been in the uh, document imaging industry now for 23 years, and I'm currently the Chief Technology Officer at Visioneer, a scanner company. And uh, in December 2015, I was voted the chairman of the Twain Working Group, um, an organization which I'm going to describe a little bit more in a moment. And uh, I'm here to talk to you about a specialization of PDF that uh, we've developed that may interest you and that to discuss how we got there. Last year, my colleague uh, Rene Ribe, who's uh, here in the front row, uh, introduced you to the work that we were doing. And uh, this year, I'm here to discuss the final product and review all the major details with you. And uh, I plan to discuss uh, the more important points like the uh, uh, what, why, uh, where, when, and, uh, and so on. So what is Twain and who is the Twain Working Group? TWG short form should not be confused with the uh, Technical Working Group from the PDF Association. We're uh, different uh, groups. And uh, it's safe to say that if you use a scanner connected to a desktop computer at any time, uh, that you've probably used Twain at some point. Uh, Twain is a royalty-free uh, open standard uh, scanning protocol that facilitates communication between image capture applications and image capture devices. Uh, forgive my uh, icon, this is uh, just a, that we have to be vendor agnostic when we display the scanners. <laughs> I want to show some paper. The Twain Working Group is the not-for-profit organization that is responsible for maintaining and improving the Twain standard. The Twain Working Group membership is made up of commercial scanner and hardware and software vendors. And on this slide here, you can see the current roster of companies that are participating in this, uh, this organization. So what drove, what drove the need for PDF raster? Uh, to explain, I have to take a step back and discuss some of the Twain Working Group activities of the uh, last year. And uh, besides, you know, besides maintaining and enhancing the existing standard, the Twain Working Group is responsible for looking ahead towards the future. And of course, the future is mobile and cloud. I think we can all agree that uh, this is a primary influencer of most of our um, activities that we're participating in. And for the Twain Working Group, this was the major influencer for a new standard we're introducing called Twain Direct. We decide and influencing the goals for this standard. One of the primary goals of Twain Direct is that it should be driverless. The idea of connecting a scanner through a cable to a device is, uh, is going to go away in the future. And uh, the, it's not reasonable to expect every vendor from every scanner manufacturer to provide some sort of native driver support on every platform that, uh, that is been the way we've been doing in the past. It was sufficient to have support from uh, Macintosh or Windows for your target audience. Now everybody's using uh, um, every type of uh, platform. So no drivers. Another goal, to make it a network scanning protocol language. It's clear that with the Internet of Things, that everything in your house, everything is becoming quickly a network appliance. And uh, the same direction is going with, uh, with scanning devices. And of course, every interesting platform we want to talk to, like uh, mobile, um, desktop, or server platforms, all have some kind of network interface. So this is a very common, uh, common and available uh, uh, technique for reaching these devices. Uh, simplified application development after many years of uh, frustration and support and lots of questions uh, over the you know, Twain standards and other competing standards, we decided that to promote um, you know, a broad range of robust scanning solutions that the, the new protocol should you know, really simplify the, uh, the method of developing an, app, an actual application or solution. And probably the most important is, at the end, the user experience. To uh, achieve the best possible user experience, this protocol has been designed with success as the default outcome. 
So uh, to explain a little bit, um, no matter what the settings required for the scanning job or the capability of the scanner, the result for the user will be success. And to explain that, we've completely abandoned the uh, old get set uh, or property get set interrogation style model of, uh, of scanning protocols where you get what supported uh, resolutions and then you set one of the supported resolutions, for example. Um, so basically, the, we've moved to an intent-based job protocol, or sorry, an intent-based job description. And uh, in this, uh, this case, settings are more of a suggestion. So if the scanner, if the job is uh, applied and the scanner cannot achieve the setting, it will do a best guess. Um, for example, if you ask for 240 DPI, but the scanner supports 200 DPI, the result will be 200 DPI. It won't be an error. It will be an actual image. Nine out of 10 users will be completely happy with this result. It's, uh, in my opinion, that kind of an error would be uh, uh, an issue with the, the solution integrator who created the, the application. The uh, user gets, a, gets an image, so he's happy. If um, there is a one in 10 user who is going to be completely unhappy with that result, and he's going to realize very quickly that he bought the wrong scanner to complete the job he wants to accomplish. And of course, I'm not here to talk, uh, focus on Twain Direct itself. I'm here to focus on the data format. And the, arguably, the data format is um, the star of the show in any scanning protocol. Would be the uh, data format and, of course, the image data format. Um, our experience led us to decide that Twain Direct would transfer fully formed files. Um, this is a departure from the current scanning protocols that uh, transfer just strips of image data and leave it up to the application to uh, construct the file after it has been transferred. And uh, in our experience, this uh, leads to a lot of problems on different platforms. It's better to just have one fully formed file that can be used by the user. It makes uh, it possible to create very simple scanning solutions. And of course, uh, when selecting a file format, we have to be certain that this file format supports all of the uh, image data formats that are supported by scanners today. We don't want there to be any transformation required or extra processing required. So we're looking for uncompressed raster image data support and common scanner compression support like Group 4 and JPEG. And of course, since we're now going to be participating more in the cloud and over networks, security is, uh, a poss is something that we wanted to uh, consider. Um, thinking, for example, that a file that is going through the cloud might actually be resting on a, uh, on a server somewhere. And we want to make sure that whatever format we chose had the ability to protect this file at rest and not just in motion. Immediately, of course, we narrowed our options. Uh, the first, the obvious options were TIFF uh, and PDF. And uh, spoiler alert, PDF was selected, okay? But I just want to quickly walk you through the decision process and why that uh, became the obvious choice. So we did a pro-con analysis of the uh, two formats. And in looking at uh, TIFF, we immediately, uh, of course, notice it supports all the required data formats. It's very popular and well known. And the cons, um, it's not an, an active and uh, actively maintained or uh, evolving standard. Um, we also have ongoing negative user experience issues with uh, images often showing up in different viewers for uh, bitonal images, showing up inverted, or uh, depending on what type of compression was used and also uh, ongoing issues with sometimes uh, JPEG compressed to files not being able to be read by some processors and some uh, 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 different uh, types of uh, writers using different supported formats. And also there was no, we didn't see a standard uh, encryption and signing support likely uh, uh, caused because they don't have, uh, this is not an active and evolving standard. 
And on native platforms, we find when we have a TIFF file to load on your mobile device, you often have to download an application to actually be able to, uh, to view the file. This would be on your Android or I think uh, uh, Apple has some support now, but uh, we still have to, uh, it's not supported on all major mobile platforms. And of course, uh, in most uh, document imaging workflows, metadata is required. And the metadata is often stored in a separate file. This is standard practice today for capture solutions, but we're looking, if we're going to improve something, it would be nice to, uh, to eliminate this requirement. So looking at PDF, the pros, of course, had the same uh, media pros, supports all of the required data formats. It's a very well-known standard. Oh, but it's also an active and evolving standard, thanks to uh, PDF Association and, uh, and all of you involved. It uh, has standard encryption and signing support built in, and native support on uh, popular mobile platforms. I, I don't, I can uh, view a PDF in uh, just about anything or everything that I uh, want to uh, do scanning on right now. And uh, embedded metadata, the possibility to actually package metadata with the file to move through a workflow right from the point of capture is a very attractive uh, feature as well. And then, of course, there, there was a, a con for those of us who are the scanner providers, <coughs> manufacturers. It's just, it's so robust in trying to decide what is the, uh, the you know, the correct uh, um, features to be supporting for scanners. We just felt that it was very broad and we wanted to narrow the, the scope a little bit if we're going to use PDF. So this is the process that led us to desire PDF um, to be used at the point of digitizing uh, documents. Uh, we knew that PDF would be the best user experience, but uh, uh, many capture uh, implementers would be uh, very intimidating if we just told them that they had to uh, support a PDF coming from a scanner at, uh, no matter without setting any boundaries. So if you recall, I'm not, I am a scanner protocol expert and I'm actually new uh, to PDF in the last uh, few years during this process. So I'm uh, expecting the knowledge of PDF in this room is, uh, exceeds my own. Um, so I'll probably have to rely on my colleague Rene also to uh, help me with some questions. Uh, but <laughs> I'm going to go over with you here, uh, you know, all the deep, you know, the uh, highlights of the standard itself. So PDF raster at the high level is a highly restricted version of PDF that is 100% compatible with any PDF processor. Because of the, predict of the restricted and predictable nature, it's possible to read and write with a very light code footprint. Since data is traveling through the cloud, I mentioned that we maintained from the PDF standard, we maintained all of the, uh, or we maintained the encryption and signing features um, to support this. And after uh, meeting with, uh, with Duff at the uh, Harvey Spencer event maybe two years ago, it's when we began this, uh, this activity um, in cooperation with the PDF Association to make sure that while we were restricting PDF, being scanner protocol experts, that we were relying on the PDF Association to guide us and make sure that we don't do anything uh, upsetting or incorrect. So first off, most of PDF raster is uh, describing, um, you know, uh, or is documenting restrictions in the standard. In this one particular case, this is the uh, only new concept that uh, we've introduced specifically for PDF raster. And this is that we have a, requ have a requirement that there is a comment um, labeled PDF raster with a version. And you can see it uh, appears just before the last start xref in the PDF file. And <clears throat> we are confident that this uh, comment is benign. And when the PDF file is, uh, is resaved, this comment should be uh, lost. And the uh, file will end its existence as a PDF raster file. This is important to 
so that when uh, a, a PDF processor uh, that is very lightweight, that doesn't have all of the support and wants to make certain assumptions, can know that the file has been edited and modified and is no longer PDF raster, uh, a valid PDF raster file. So PDF subset for unencrypted files can be anything, uh, you know, at PDF 1.4 to 1.7. Uh, uh, filters that will appear in PDF raster are flate decode uh, for the um, for color data. Um, image data, you will find uh, CCITT fax decode just for bitonal images and DCT decode for 8-bit grayscale images, or sorry, 8-bit grayscale and RGB images. For encrypted files, we decided to uh, stick with the new PDF 2.0 standard to inherit all of the um, all of the uh, security benefits and best practices that come with PDF 2.0. And uh, so, if it's an encrypted file, you must use PDF 2.0 or identify as a PDF 2.0. And of course, uh, filters are flat. CCITT fax decode, DCT decode, and then crypt for uh, the newly encrypted data. Also, I hope this is normal for all PDF files, but um, all indirect references must uh, refer to valid objects. And the use of object streams is forbidden. The, we want the PDF processor to be able to find all of the objects without additional processing, which would be required if we supported the um, object streams. <clears throat> the catalog dictionary has uh, all the entries required by ISO 32001, which would be type and pages, uh, optional entries, uh, would be version viewer preferences, page layout, and page mode, act form, metadata. Um, again, when looking at the uh, low, uh, a reader that just wants to really access the raw image data for its purposes, these are fields that will not affect the raw image data. It can't be ignored. Um, document level metadata appears uh, referenced from the catalog dictionary and uh, page level metadata from the page dictionary, and of course is supporting everything already defined in ISO 32001 um, and anything custom using a custom namespace. And the Twain Working Group will uh, support, will document separately um, a namespace with Twain, spe Twain Direct specific metadata that could appear in these files. We didn't feel it was appropriate to add this to the PDF raster specification because that is more Twain protocol specific. And PDF raster has uses outside of Twain itself. And of course, uh, document information dictionary may exist and contain the following uh, entries um, with the stipulation that if this exists, that these must all the uh, corresponding XMP metadata must also exist in the catalog dictionary. Getting into page objects, each image is a page object. Uh, all of the required entries plus the following optional entries are supported, contents, rotate, metadata, outs, and PZ. And of course, these optional uh, entries have some restrictions, but uh, described later, but they will have no impact on the interpretation of the, the raw image data. Page tree nodes, inheritance is not allowed. Uh, the media box uh, describes the image uh, or describes the size before rotation. Um, annots are supported. Our annotation is supported strictly for digital signatures, and the digital signature should have no visual representation to be uh, valid in this case. Resources is a dictionary of X objects named strip zero, strip one, and each uh, strip is the, the name of the strip defines where in the page that the strip should appear. 
Rotate is only supported in the page object, not in the notes. And the content stream draws these strips as is, no clipping, no masks, or uh, inline images. Strips themselves. Um, important to know here that all strips of a page of an image coming from a scanner, all strips from a page of an image will have the same width, uh, all the ones that can, are contained on the same page. Um, the data shall only be bitonal, grayscale, or RGB. It's possible that the X and Y resolution might differ within the page, but between the strips, the X resolution will be the same for all strips within the page, and the Y resolution will be the same for all strips within the page. Oh, there is, um, for non-PDF raster aware viewers in the case that uh, strips are used, there is a, a known issue that there may be gaps uh, present in the, from the non-PDF raster aware viewer, and I'll explain a little bit how uh, we hope to get around this. For bitonal strips, uh, bits per component obviously is one, and uh, color space should be device gray or cal gray. Uh, black is one should be false or not uh, present. And uh, this is uh, in line with uh, the type of data that comes off from a scanner. Um, and the filter supports uh, either uncompressed or group four compressed. For grayscale data, the bits per component can be eight or 16 bit. Um, color space can be as cal gray, and uh, the filter can be either uncompressed or compressed, but it's important that compression uh, is not supported for 16-bit. It's not possible to have a 16-bit JPEG compressed image. For RGB, similar restrictions, of course, uh, uh, with, uh, except the possibility of an ICC-based uh, color profile. So incremental updates are supported, but they're only supported for the purpose of allowing more than one digital signature on the document. And it was agreed that uh, it's possible that a document coming from the scanner might be uh, signed by both the owner of the scanner, the company that uh, has provided the equipment, and possibly signed by the, uh, the user who's actually performed the scan. Um, and different types of workflows like that should be supported. Of course, uh, for an encrypted file, there will be an encryption dictionary. Security handler and AES algorithm has a key length of 256, and the V key value shall be 5. Um, once you have another very interesting note, once you have uh, um, created a PDF raster file, it's a very short distance to make that PDF raster file also PDFA compliant. If you, in this case, there, there are some additional restrictions you need to observe and uh, use Calgary for bitonal images, add document level XMP metadata and a PDFA part number, and it doesn't uh, support encrypted versions of PDF raster. So it's a, a handy uh, shortcut or short distance. Challenges, um, when compared to the classical way of uh, uh, extracting image data from a scanner with its raster lines, it can be a little bit harder to parse uh, for a programmer. Uh, but to uh, address this, the Twain Working Group is providing lightweight reader and writer code available from our, uh, our website that's freely available, free to use. Is it open to all seminar? Yeah, it's open source. For strips and gaps, just to talk a little bit about this, the, the incidence of actually using strips in a PDF raster file by a scanner that's generating this file 
Um, we're hoping that this, well, hoping, we know as scanner vendors that this will be a, um, a more fringe case or specialized cases where this happens. It will happen if it's a very low cost scanner that has very little memory. But a very low cost scanner with, with very little memory um, may also not have a network interface and may not even be a, a twin direct device. So it's, uh, it's not, um, that should be a fringe case. Another case is for very long documents. If you uh, have in hospitals, they sometimes scan uh, EKG forms. Uh, they can be very long, scanning an entire box of thin full paper. Um, in this case, we would expect to see strips. We would expect to see strips also in very high resolution uh, scanning, uh, large format. And uh, in those cases, a uh, specialized PDF raster aware reader is not going to have any problem combining those into a single strip um, that uh, can be rendered properly with a, a generic viewer. And the reason you wouldn't be able to do this on a scanner really is limited resources. So when you have these specialized cases, it should be converted on a desktop PC or in the cloud into something that uh, doesn't have strips. And uh, compared to TIFF or even uh, Twain, um, the current twin, the resolution must be calculated when you look at this file. And um, it's a simple calculation because there is no, the image data contained is uh, in the uh, image stream is interpreted as is. So you can uh, calculate just using the, uh, with the media box and the strip width of the first strip will tell you what the X resolution is. Um, this is the conversion from points to uh, um, dots per inch. And for the Y resolution, you of course need to consider the entire height of the image. If there is multiple strips, they all must be added together to get the total height. And again, the conversion from points to, uh, um, to bits per, or <coughs> dots per inch is, uh, with this formula. So when and where can I get this? PDF will now be uh, an integral part of the new Twain standard. And so all new uh, Twain Direct devices will produce, at a minimum, a PDF raster file. The standards and specifications will be available along with the Twain Direct standard and specification. It's uh, also, uh, we're planning to uh, pursue an ISO path to uh, get this an ISO standard through the PDF Association, so it will be available through the PDF Association. And all future software that's Twain, that wants to be Twain Direct compliant must be able to produce or consume a valid PDF raster file. So the schedules we have uh, Twain Local, which is the uh, local area network version of Twain, uh, or Twain Direct, that supports uh, devices just within a, a local area network, not thinking about the cloud. Um, this is scheduled, it's coming up very soon. We have meetings in uh, Wolfersheim uh, tomorrow, and uh, we'll be discussing how the launch is going, looking forward to a July 1st uh, availability for the standard and PDF uh, raster. Uh, of course, will be uh, allowed or are coming at the same time. And there's also Twain Direct on Twain, which is a, a bridge technology that we're providing for Windows that enables an existing Twain Classic native driver to behave or become a Twain Direct uh, device that can be shared on the local area network for the purpose of getting moving forward with developing Twain Direct applications, and this will uh, will produce PDF raster files. This is coming at the same time, uh, looking at July 1. And by the year end, we would like to finish with uh, Twain Cloud and, uh, and have uh, this new standard available for everyone. Um, PDF raster has many uses, I think, outside of uh, Twain Direct. Uh, as a possible replacement for TIFF, uh, just for the reasons that we uh, already explained. Um, you know, PDF Raster has all the familiar benefits of TIFF. PDF Raster supports encryption, digital signatures, and embedded metadata, an advantage over TIFF. 
um, PDF raster will continue to evolve. Uh, when we get to some compression methods for 16-bit data that's supported by scanners, we could uh, see some improvements there. Um, and our the way we see it, PDF raster is an on-ramp to rich PDF uh, content. So if the documents start out as a PDF, they're immediately going into a PDF processor, the next step we expect after that is for this to become, uh, you know, searchable and become much more uh, robust um, within your own document imaging systems or process further in the workflow. For more information, these are the websites uh, managed by Twain, Twain.org, TwainDirect.org, and uh, PDFRaster.org. Um, you can uh, feel free to contact Aaron Dempsey or myself by email. And, uh, Look forward to um, seeing any uh, announcements around uh, July 1st, around Twain Direct and PDF Raster to uh, get access to the code and the standards. And, uh, and I want to take a moment to uh, just really thank um, the PDF Association for uh, stepping in and helping us. Uh, Olaf Drummer was uh, um, instrumental in managing all of our, uh, our calls and making sure that they uh, they happen on time and that we didn't get off track on uh, certain uh, PDF uh, items. And uh, Duff Johnson for organizing everything together. And, uh, and Roman Toto for helping us with, uh, with encryption. And we had, uh, you know, there was Peter Wyatt, Leonard Rosenthal, and more people than I can even remember that participated at different times. And uh, we got this together very quick, uh, within a year. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Okay. Yeah, thank you also <laughs> for the help, but you named the PDF experts, but uh, <laughs> we could add something. Okay, so yeah, we have some minutes for questions. So, yeah, that's the first one. So, um, given that you're coming up with the specification now, why, um, why are you choosing to support PDF versions prior to 2? Uh, I, you know, there was uh, many back and forth and discussions. There isn't any reason we didn't see any reason to restrict it because we didn't, you know, other than encryption, we didn't have any uh, any restriction or any new concepts or even use any features that uh, were beyond 1.4. So there was lots of debate about in that uh, group about which one uh, should be supported. And I think uh, um, we didn't want to be in a position where a PDF uh, processor just refused to load the, the image you know, July 1, 2017, because we put a version that somebody um, was really filtering for. And uh, yes, there will be PDF 2.0 uh, processors, aware processors coming, but we just really wanted to make sure the user experience was 100%, uh, that no, no reader was going to reject an uncompressed PDF raster file. Right, because, because the, the document information dictionary goes away in um, so you so your the metadata that you're that you're going to emit has to change between the two the, the different versions PDF one or PDF two. Okay. So you might be making more, more making it more complicated for yourself in a way. Well, the the document information dictionary may appear. It's not uh, it's not required. We just won't reject it. Um, but that's a very good point. We possibly could have uh, also said it shouldn't even be there. Isn't the, the, the um, encryption uh, version 5 also from, from PDF 2.0? Yes. Yes. Okay. Or, or the Adobe extension? Yes. It's, uh, it's from, it wouldn't be an Adobe extension, it would be the, the standard for the new, uh, new PDF 2.0 standard. Yeah, right. Okay. But what about that? I think the Adobe extension wasn't secure, right? I think that it was not used because. So do the extension only yeah. have one right of hash yeah. and yeah. yeah. But this is also the reason why for encryption we changed to version two to support selection encryption. Yeah, the encryption is from version two. If it's an encrypted file, it must be two. Yeah. Other questions on here? Okay. I'm always wondering can I do PDF Rasta and hardware? Yes. 
in hardware. So I, know I have a little bit JPEG 2000 history, so some scanner vendors like IBM L, for example, built a JPEG 2000 chip. Sure. Yeah. So, so I, I'm not an hardware expert, so is it possible with, let's say, hardware these days? Or we have, you know, uh, I know a scanner is also a computer these days, so there's uh, <laughs> more power in, in my desktop PC. We have, uh, we had cooperation from the from more engineers um, and uh, high-end scanner companies that uh, are really sure that uh, the lightweight reader and writer that we provided can be uh, executed in an ASIC uh, level. Okay. The, the scanners already support compression. Uh, many of the ASICs uh, built in already support encryption. And uh, all we're providing is the tool to package these. So there's no requirement for uh, codecs or these types of things. We just create the tags, give us the data, and put it. It's a very simple SDK, very lightweight. And then the other one, a little bit from the workflow, because you said when, when I resave the PDS, the raster tag goes away. So the base idea is to, to start with a simple PDF raster when I think of some scanning workflow. So I scan the document, I have a PDF raster. Uh, no, nobody should sign it because <laughs> it gets <laughs> more difficult. And then when it starts in the workflow processing, it becomes becomes a normal PDF. That's, that's uh, the workflow idea to have that. Exactly. Yeah. And one should note that um, we designed the raster so as a marker so that even for incremental updates, so it, it, this is the reason why it is at the end because actually initially we put it naively at the beginning where you would normally put, put it, but later we re realized in the standard process that if you make an incremental update, the file still would look like a PDF raster. This is why it is at the last x mm -hmm. Um So if you do an incremental update, it would be still in the middle of the file and invalidate the file as PDF raster because it's not at the end of the file anymore. That is the reason why we've chosen this place carefully. Uh -huh. okay. But from the workflow, I'm looking to PDF A, so <laughs> and scanning at the end, I often want to put a PDF A to the archive. So, uh, and we, were, and we cannot really detect anymore in the archive that so it started its life as a PDF raster file. No. Which so. is not necessary. I mean, I hope, hope my idea. Yeah. Well, there's a really good chance the, the comment has disappeared at some point in the uh, PDF processing. But uh, so it may still be present in the file during an incremental update, but in a full edit and save, it may be discarded. Um, but for what you're discussing, also PDFA, it's possible for the scanner to spit out to you know to uh, produce a PDFA compliant PDF raster. So if the scanner yeah. if the scanner takes into consideration the additional PDFA requirements, uh, it can start out as a PDFA PDF raster, which would be my <laughs> let's say best practice, <laughs> at least for the let's say typically scanning workflow. Right? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Well then, just thank you very much, John. Okay, thank you. Yeah.